Hello students, in this lesson, let us study about the airport markings. So there are basically six groups of airport markings which we have to study. So we will see each one of them in detail. Normally for assisting the pilot in guiding the aircraft on the runway and taxiway and the pavements are marked with lines and numbers so these airport markings are of benefit to the pilots for recognizing the various airport elements during the daylight and the dusk so not during the night so at night what will happen the lights are used to guide the pilot in loading and morning in the airport so the white color is used for all the markings of the runways and for marking of the apron and taxiway the color used is yellow which is a very important factor right white for runways yellow for taxiways and aprons so along with these markings there is another important marking which is your wind direction indicator and is essential in all airports so as I told you, the airport markings are divided into six categories. The apron marking, landing direction marking, runway marking, shoulder marking, taxiway marking and the wind direction indicator. So we will see in detail each one of it. So the first one is your apron marking. So your apron is provided with certain guidelines which will help the pilot in maneuvering the critical aircrafts on the airport normally what will happen is if the aircraft is smaller it can use the same path without any difficulty and in apron the guideline will indicate the direction in which your nose gear of the aircraft should be placed you can say path of nose gear of the aircraft okay then in apron you have a problem that uh, it will have lot of fuel spillage so you will be using yellow paint as i already told you in the apron we use yellow paint this should be of special fuel resistant variant or else what will happen there are lot of chances that the paint will go off right so we have to use special fuel resistant variant type of paint okay next the second one is the landing direction indicator now to indicate the landing direction an arrow or a t is placed at the center of the segmented circle so what we place we either place an arrow or t in center of segmented circle so it will indicate the pilot the direction of active runway of the airport so this will indicate what active runway of airport so normally this will be painted in orange or white color so that it can be spotted in the daytime and for night time this will be lighted normally this will be fixed at a distinct place so you can see how the landing direction indicator will look okay so this is the t shape type so if you observe it has 4 meter of length and 4 meter of width and the thickness is 0 0.4 meters so this is how your landing direction indicator will look moving on to the next one is your runway marking so in runway lot of other markings also will be made okay so you can divide the runway markings into six different categories the first one is the runway center line marking second one is the runway edge strip third is the runway numbering fourth is the touchdown or landing zone fifth is the threshold marking and the sixth one is a two or more parallel runways all of it 
we can see in this figure. I will explain you each of it one by one. So first one is your railway center line marking. So normally your runway center line marking is in the form of a broken strip which runs along the center line of the entire length of the runway. And this is normally of 90 centimeters in width. So if you observe, this is your runway center line here, here. This is the, see, runway center line marking, which is 90 centimeter wide or 0 0.9 meters, you can say. Right. The next one is the runway edge. So basically the edges of the runway are also normally marked. But when the width of the runway exceeds 45 meter, the side strip in the form of a long continuous 90 centimeter width may be marked near to the edge. Okay. So if you can observe this line is your runway edge marking. Okay. This line and as well as you can see it here. Okay, so this is a discontinuous pattern what they have shown. So runway edge marking which is of 90 centimeters width. So this is over center line and this edge marking is over now. Next is your runway numbering. So normally the end of each runway will be marked with a number which this number indicates the magnetic azimuth so what is magnetic azimuth the direction of the magnetic north measured in clockwise direction is nothing but the magnetic azimuth so what is the meaning suppose the east end west end of the uh, runway is there so the east end should be marked with 27 for 270 degree and the west end should be marked with 9 that is for 90 degree right so it can be seen here in this figure so north is 0 west is 270 degree and the east is 90 degree whereas south will be 180 degree so if 27 marking is there that means what it is in 90 degree and if 9 marking is there it means what it is at 270 degree okay now, this is if we have a single runway. Now, if more than three parallel runways are there, then one pair is marked with the magnetic azimuth to the nearest 10 degree and the other is marked with the magnetic azimuth to the next nearest 10 degree. Okay. For instance, if there are four runways, one pair would be marked with 9 and 27. See here, 9 and 27 is for one pair and the other pair would be marked with 8 and 26. So one pair with 9 and 27. The other pair is with 8 and 26. That is basically we are reducing 10 if you can observe. Then the other pair we can mark as 10 and 28. Basically the difference would be 10 degree. Right. If this figure will show you the runway of a three intersecting runways so one is for 9 and 27 the other one is for 4 and 22 and the other one is for 13 and 31 so based on the angle see here you have 40 degrees so here it is marking 4 and here you have 220 degree so here the marking is 22 so in this manner you have to do the numbering of the runway so next is the touchdown marking so the runway touchdown or the landing zone is indicated by a series of strips arranged symmetrically about the center line with their number decreasing gradually in the direction of the landing. So if you observe, if the landing direction is happening like this, so this entire zone is the runway touchdown zone. Right. So here if you observe, there are four strips or four lines. So each strip is of 1.8 meter width and they are spaced at 1.5 meter clear distance and the length of each strip is 22.5. Okay, and they are placed on either side of the center line at 15 meter distance. 
right so initially they are four then they have reduced to three then they are reduced to two and then this reduced to one so within this region we have to make the touchdown and the distance between the start of this and the start of this is kept normally equal to 150 meters the next one is your threshold marking the fifth one is the threshold marking so the runway threshold is indicated by again a series of parallel lines starting from a distance of 6 meters from the runway end so this threshold marking should start this is a runway end so 6 meters from the runway end these have to start okay so these are normally 3 3.6 meter wide right you can observe here and the spacing between each is 90 centimeters or 0 0.9 meters and are spaced symmetrically on either side of this center line of the markings normally in some airports it is desirable to displace the runway threshold on a permanent basis normally a displaced threshold is the one which has been moved at a certain distance from the end of the runway this is done normally to clear the obstructions in the flight path okay so you can observe here this is the arrowhead which is indicating the direction of the marking and we have a threshold marking here right so at five minute this is your threshold marking right this is a standard runway marking which is available so we can displace it like this so for 24 meters or 36 meters 24 meters 36 meters like this the arrow will be there and you can displace it by some value then the last one is your two or more parallel runways so when there are more than one runway in the same direction normally we have to use letters which will be added to the azimuth okay so i will write it here so if we have two parallel runways then we have to use L and R. If we have three parallel runways, then we have to use L, C, R. If we have four parallel runways, then we have to use L, R, L, R. Then for five, we have to use L, C, R, L, R. Right? This is how we have to add a letter to the azimuth in this order. So this is all about your runway marking. Moving on to the next one, the next one is your shoulder marking. So, shoulders on the edges of the runway and a taxiway are paid, but they are not capable of withstanding the aircraft load. So, we should make sure that the aircraft doesn't go on to the shoulder area. So, a paved blast pad about 45 meters to 60 meters in length is provided adjacent to your runway. Okay. So, here you can see the blast pad which is 45 to 60 meters in width so this you can see here is your runway shoulder right here you can see your taxiway shoulder normally this is uh, provided in order to prevent the erosion of soil okay this paved area of the blast pad is not designed so that it can support the aircraft load but it may have the appearance of being so designed Normally, these paints are made in yellow color and they are made in the form of diagonal strips like this. You can observe they are in the form of diagonal strips. The width of each strip is of this width is of 90 centimeters or 0 0.9 meters. Okay, the taxiway and the holding apron shoulders are marked with the strips which are at right angle. You can observe only in runway they are diagonal whereas in the holding apron as well as in the taxiway if you can observe they are at 90 degree okay whereas here they are diagonal which is nothing but your 45 degree and each strip is uh, placed at a distance of around 30 meters and in the blast pad we can see the pattern of v shape or this is also called as chevron shape uh, chevron pattern in which the strips are marked okay so this is all about your shoulder marking next one is the taxiway marking right in taxiway marking 
a single continuous 15 centimeter yellow strip is used to mark the center line of the taxi way okay so this you can observe here the center line of the taxi way which is of a strip of 0 0.5 meters and there is a single line and then at the intersection of the taxi way with the runway end the center line of the taxi way is terminated at the edge of this particular runway okay this is your second criteria and the third one is all other intersections of the taxiway with the runway the center line of the taxiway is extended to the center line of the runway so you can see that in this figure see here this is the taxiway center line right this will go to the center line of your runway this is the center line of your runway and this will go up to a distance of 60 meters minimum 60 meters you can take it along still if you want you can take it along and the holding line marking is normally given at 30 meters minimum this is how the holding line marking will look so two lines and two dotted lines two solid lines and two dotted lines here also you can see two solid lines and two dotted lines so this was at a certain angle the taxiway now this is at exactly 90 degree but this also will happen in the same way here you can see the center line of the runway this is how it will look the taxiway marking and the distance between this is kept as 0 0.9 meters the distance between the center line of the taxiway and the center line of the runway so till this much distance we can extend it okay at intersections so if there are any taxiway intersections we can go for this type of intersections in the marking okay the final one is the wind direction indicator. So the direction from which the wind blow is indicated at the airport by the help of a wind cone. Okay. So this is the wind cone or the wind direction indicator. This is how it will look. So it will have colored bands of white and black or red and white or orange and white. It can be of any three color combination. The diameter is kept as 0 0.9 meters. And the cone width, a uh, minimum of 3.6 meter cone width we have to keep. So, this is the enlarged view. This is what we are seeing here. Now, this is fixed on the landing direction indicator. We have already seen about the landing direction indicator, right? So, it has 4 meters and 4 meters like this and the thickness is 0 0.4 meters. Now, this is encycled into a circle. Now, this circle is made up of panels of painted white. So, the panel length is uh, kept uh, somewhere around 1.8 meters to 3.6 meters, right? 30 mm inside diameter is for this panel and the panel width, this width is kept as 0 0.9 meters to 2.4 meters. So, according to ICAO, we have to place this wind direction indicator very far from the place which should be affected by your eddies. And the panel forming the segmented circle markings are glabbed roof shape with a pitch of at least one to one should be used. And they should be made in the color of white or some contrast color between the marker and its surrounding so that we can have protection against the weather. You have to make sure that the paints are in such a way that from a height of uh, about 30 meters also this is visible normally we can use black and white combination red and white combination or orange and white combination okay so this is all about the wind direction indicators so these are the six type of airport markings which we have to understand so that they guide the pilots properly for landing or takeoff operation so hope the lesson is clear to you thank you